Russian exhibition is extraordinary. Here we read a whole story starting with the 11th century, which was the beginning of the Christian world under Tsar Vladimir in Russia, and following through a bank of icons. Peter the Great introduced French and European arts, other European arts, into Russia to the extent that his court in St. Petersburg had to dress like the French in Versailles and actually speak the French language. We then move into the imperial world of Catherine the Great. With Catherine the Great, we see the imperial Russian court through a table laid with Russian artifacts, porcelains. Uh, I think there are about 30 or 40 pieces, but in the real life setting, there were 934 pieces in this particular set. There are other magnificent gilded porcelain pieces that were um, Tsarist gifts, imperial gifts from one member of the family to another. We have a representation of uh, the white and gold drawing room from the Mikhailovsky Palace. It really is white and gold, and the furniture, as you see from a magnificent backdrop that the Russians provided us with, is part of the furnishing of the ground floor, the main floor, of that wonderful palace. Uh, Liszt played in that room, so it has famous musical associations. And then as we move on in the exhibition, we come to a peasant hut made entirely out of logs without nails or screws in the traditional way that the Russian wooden buildings were created, fortresses, peasant huts, and churches, many of which burnt down and no longer exist because they were lit by candlelight in the 19th century. And part of the Russian folk area is particularly interesting to me because the portraits and the paintings are representative of peasants who, if they were rich, would have dressed that way. All the paintings of the show are by famous Russian artists who are represented regularly in their art history books. And moving on from that area, we come to a nobleman's area, Dostoevsky's desk, which represents literature, along with portraits of Tolstoy and his son uh, within the exhibition and a very interesting painting from the 19th century which shows a rather large room in a noble house, exactly how the furniture would have been arranged. And then we move on from there to the end of the Russian era with the assassination of Nicholas II. We see him grandly dressed in a wonderful portrait by Repin, the famous Russian artist, standing in full uniform in front of some extraordinary decorative arts that would have been in the summer palace at Peterhof. A painting by Repin shows a young couple in love and splashing in the ice-cold waves off the coast of Russia as you look towards Finland. And then we jump for an end to this exhibition into Diaghilev, who with his Russian dancers, the Ballet Russe, made it in fact to Europe in the 1920s. The Russians have made their world come alive for us in a way that you just can't find if you go to an exhibition that focuses on only one particular aspect of Russian arts.